SketchUp for Web is an online piece of software that's great for 3D modeling, creating simple models of your various projects. Um, and all you have to do is go to their website, sketchup.com forward slash products forward slash SketchUp for Web, um, or just Google SketchUp for Web. And you won't be able to start modeling. There's a big button here that says start modeling, but it won't let you do it until you sign in. So by all means, uh, create a sign in. You won't have to pay for it, but I would recommend using your student email address when you do this. Eventually we will take a look at the full version of SketchUp. We can try have a trial of that product, but you will need your, uh, your school ID and email address in order to get that version. When you actually manage to sign in, you will see a splash screen once you click the Start Modeling button. And this gives you a couple of options. You can open a file that you've created already. And uh, you can see here I've got an icon of a file I've already created. You can also create a new file, uh, just a totally blank document. And of course, there are options for should it be in feet and inches like we have in the United States, or should you do it in metric where you're working with everyone else in the world. So uh, make your choice there. I believe the default on mine is feet and inches. You can also open a file that is on your device, and this includes importing models from other programs like good old AutoCAD. Finally, there is something called Trimble Connect, and this is an online database or an online storage service, kind of like iCloud, where you can upload your documents, share them, uh, and you can also open them on your iPad uh, if you have SketchUp installed on your iPad. But I'm going to uh, start with a demonstration model here so that you can see some basic features of SketchUp. So here is the basic interface of SketchUp for Web. And uh, such, uh, similar to AutoCAD, the screen is dominated by the modeling area. Similar to AutoCAD, you can zoom in and out. I'm just going to click and uh, scroll my scroll wheel, click and scroll my scroll wheel uh, to scroll in and out, uh, just like on AutoCAD, that's zooming. If you click and drag your scroll wheel, you will find that the model spins around and that is called orbiting. Now that's a big difference with AutoCAD. Everything in SketchUp is 3D. So we now have a three-dimensional model. You can see I can go up above, I can go down below, and there's a horizon line for reference. Finally, just like AutoCAD, there is panning. If you're just into using your mouse, you can hold down Shift and then click and drag your scroll wheel. And I'm doing that, although you can't see me holding down the Shift key, but I'm actually doing it. Uh, all of these tools are available here in the toolbar. Orbit and Pan are the two. Uh, and Zoom, if you want Zoom, you have to click these little three dots and all of the tools which you don't use as frequently are hidden under here. Down at the bottom you can see these are, are kind of zooming and view modifying tools. While we're looking at these tools, I think it's fairly uh, safe to say that a lot of the tools look very similar to AutoCAD. For example, the pencil tool, which is what you use for drawing a line, looks like a pencil, uh, just like it does in AutoCAD. And the keyboard shortcut, which you can see here where it says uh, the word line, that little tool tip that pop -ups, pops up, it actually has a keyboard shortcut on that. And let me zoom in on that a little. That keyboard shortcut is L for line. It's also worth noting that, just like AutoCAD, the icons for these different tools largely demonstrate how they should be used. They, uh, if you look at, for example, the two-point arc, you can see there are two black dots followed by a red dot, and that more or less uh, coordinates with the order that you click. You click the start, the end, and then the radius. Uh, and again, there's there's other arcs, just like in AutoCAD, other ways of drawing them. Um, and there's things like circles and rectangles, which are available in AutoCAD. These are all drawing tools. There are also very similar tools to AutoCAD for editing. Offset is one of those favorite ones in AutoCAD. We use it all the time. And Flip is very similar to AutoCAD in that it is the mirror, or sort of the mirror tool. 
Uh, then you'll see there are other tools in here that, again, are similar. Uh, things like dimensions, which allow you to measure things, and like I said before, all the zooming tools. Now there are a lot of tools that are not similar to AutoCAD, which we will get to, and they have to do with modeling things in three-dimensional space and creating three-dimensional objects. So while we're talking about things that are similar with AutoCAD, another thing that's similar, I'll show you by activating the line tool, is uh, the line tool you basically start drawing by clicking. Now you when you click on a surface here in SketchUp, it gives you a rubber band line. You see how the cursor is connected. Uh, the line that's being drawn is connected to my cursor. And it snaps to different angles, just like in AutoCAD. If you remember in AutoCAD, it will snap to 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 270 degrees, etc., etc. Here in SketchUp, it uses the same convention, but you see how this line that appears, the rubber banding line, is actually red when it's going in the y direction, or maybe the x direction, I can't remember, and it's green when going in the x direction. So you have two axes on the ground that are either red or green. Let's see if I move my mouse, it makes reference to those. However, there is one other axis and that is the blue axis. You see how blue lines are actually vertical. So when you draw something in SketchUp, this smart cursor is trying to figure out where do you want to draw it. Now, right now, I'm going to draw in the green direction. And if I hold down shift when the uh, icon, when the cursor uh, rubber band line becomes green, see how it gets darker? That indicates I'm locking that inference. Again, the cursor is trying to infer which direction you want to go in. See, if I move my mouse just a little bit, it goes from red to green. I can also force it to go vertically by just tapping the up arrow. And now, unless you click on some surface, it will draw vertically. Finally, if I want to finish out this square, I can use the left and right arrows. And you can see here, if I hit the right arrow, I'm going in the red direction. I believe I drew this in the green direction. And you might notice there's a dashed line connected to my cursor. That is the alignment uh, indicator from my smart cursor. Again, just like in AutoCAD, it can make reference to other points in your project just by moving your mouse over them while the inference is locked. So all I have to do is click when the inference is active, and now I can complete my square by just moving my mouse back down to the bottom. Now, fun thing about SketchUp that is different than in AutoCAD, besides being able to draw in 3D, is when you draw, if you draw a, a boundary line, something which is a contigu contiguous line that starts and ends in the same spot, um, it draws a surface. And surfaces can be drawn in any part of uh, the three-dimensional space. What else is similar to AutoCAD, you might be asking yourself. I'm sure you are. Uh, the overall organization where you have kind of uh, toolbars, um, and then here you have tool palettes, which can describe things that you're looking at or help organize them. Uh, but the last thing that is quite similar to AutoCAD is down at the bottom, you don't, you don't really have a command line, but you do have an indicator of what, Auto, uh, what SketchUp is expecting you to do next. So just like in AutoCAD, when you click on a tool, and here I'll click on the rectangle tool just for a change, um, it tells you what you're expected to do next. Unlike AutoCAD, it doesn't tell you up at the cursor. You do have to look down here at the bottom. But the other thing is there is a dimensions box, and this value control box allows you to enter dimensions for different objects. So if you remember in AutoCAD, I can draw a rectangle and define its dimensions. Well, in SketchUp, if you take a look at this box, this value control box, you can see the dimensions changing as I move my cursor. And I can just type in letters or numbers into this value control box and it will change what you draw. So for example, this has some kind of random number. Maybe I only want something that's six feet by three feet. I can type in six feet, comma, three feet, 
And you only need the foot if you are typing in feet, otherwise everything is entered in inches in this template. Hit enter, and you can see the size of the box has changed. Fun thing you can do is if you don't like that size, immediately after typing in that dimension, you can change it 10 feet, comma, 3 feet, and enter. Oops, except I typed in 10 without the apostrophe, and you can see it's a lot smaller. There we go, 10 feet by 3 feet. Once you activate another command, you basically can't modify this rectangle anymore. So unlike AutoCAD, which retains those properties as a rectangle, in SketchUp, I can select lines and edges of this. I can move those lines, but uh, I can't get back the original kind of rectilinear dimension. But this di uh, direct entry method of uh, putting in dimensions just by typing them in is a great way that you can very quickly generate a floor plan, uh, for example, uh, with dimensions that you know what they are uh, if you've gotten uh, dimensions measured from the field or from some other source. I'm just going to type in Control Z, and that should act as undo, just like in your AutoCAD version and pretty much every program that you draw with or write with. Other things that are similar to AutoCAD are the or is the ability to have layers. Now in SketchUp they're not called layers, they're called tags because that's how they want it to be. Um, and this allows me to introduce this tool palette menu over here. The one that's tags, it actually looks like a little tag. I'll click on that and you'll see there's a couple of tags in this model and just like in AutoCAD you you tend to put the stuff on a tag that uh, is descriptive of what they are so for example the roof if I turn that tag off oh the roof goes away now you have to do this manually uh, just like in AutoCAD and t uh, you don't use quite the same level of uh, detail for tagging or for layering as you have in AutoCAD. Um, however, things like the landscaping is awfully handy to be able to turn on and off. So when you click on one of these uh, me uh, menus here, they show up here uh, temporarily to let them, uh, to hide them, you can just click the uh, close panel menu. Um, if you click on another item here in the panel, um, it will open up again and whatever you had on before will also show up. So for example, if I turn on this one here, um, it will show up here in my menu. This is Entity Info. And just like in AutoCAD, if you have some object selected and in, in SketchUp to select, you actually have to use the Select tool. I'll click on an object and you can see it will tell me what the object is. In this case, it's a group. If I draw a line, it will tell me it's a line. It will have other information, for example, if the object has a tag, and it may or may not, you can give it a tag over here. We'll give it, we'll leave it as untagged. Um, there's other things uh, such as smoothing, which have to do with the display of the material. So lastly, the thing to notice that is quite similar with AutoCAD is there are groups and blocks. And in this case, I believe these plants are blocks or components is what they're called here in SketchUp. Uh, and if I click on it, you can see it actually says component in the menu. And it even tells me how many are in the model. In this case, there are nine. Now, the fun thing about components is they can be modified and all of them will change. Now for this, the plant, they're, they're fine the way they are, but um, if I wanted to say have a chair and have them all have a different material, for example, uh, I could easily do that. Now making blocks and components is really very similar. I'm going to say draw a rectangle and to make it 3D, this is one thing that's quite different than in uh, AutoCAD is you now have a tool called push-pull and push-pull allows you to drag up a surface and make a copy of it. So now I have a box and I can select the box and by the way the spacebar is the keyboard shortcut for using activating the selection command. Uh, I like to use that a lot 
because it saves time. Um, the keyboard shortcuts are a great way, like in AutoCAD, to save time. Uh, and now I can select this box. Now, by the way, another thing which is similar to AutoCAD is that you can click on an object to select it. In fact, in SketchUp, you can double click on an object and it selects the, the surface and its bounding edges. If you triple click on an object, it selects the surface you clicked on, the bounding edges, and everything that's connected to that. That's not so similar to AutoCAD. What is similar is the selection window versus the crossing window. If you remember in AutoCAD, a selection window is a solid line. If I remember, it's green. A crossing window goes from right to left, and here you can see it's a dashed line. And when you use a selection window, anything that touches the cursor gets selected. Again, this is just like AutoCAD. So if I just want this box, I can select it in any number of ways, clicking on it or using a selection or crossing window. Finally, I can create a component just by right-clicking on it. And again, this is very similar to AutoCAD. You'll see when you right-click on an object, it will bring up any number of tools and uh, editing commands that are pertinent to whatever it is that you've got selected. Now, in this case, making groups and making components uh, is are the two things that you use to organize your model. Uh, just like in AutoCAD, if I make it a component, which is an AutoCAD type block, any object that I create with this uh, in this way uh, will be, uh, oh, they will all be changed when I change it. Of course, creating components in SketchUp where they're 3D is a little more complicated, but you can give it a name, you can even give it a description, and then there's a couple of other funny features. You can glue it to different three-dimensional surfaces if you want, if that's important to you. For example, if it's a light fixture that's meant to go on a wall, you could absolutely glue it so that it will only attach to vertical surfaces. There's also a funny one here where it can rotate and always face the camera, but you only really do that when you have something that's flat. But anyway, I'll click OK, and you can see here now, just like in AutoCAD, all the objects are glued together, and um, they can be moved um, as a single object. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this object very quickly, and what you'll see is if I want to edit it, just like in AutoCAD, you double click on it, the rest of the model disappears, but what's funny is, let's say I use that push-pull tool to modify the height of this object, or maybe create some more detail in the object. They all change throughout the model. And it doesn't matter what the rotation or position is. Uh, Three-dimensionally, the object will change based on whatever you do to the one you double-clicked on. One other thing that's similar to AutoCAD is the kind of onboard help uh, system. With AutoCAD, if you mouse over a tool, it will give you kind of instructions. Here in SketchUp, there's something called the instructor. You click on the instructor, and uh, first of all, it tells you what it's supposed to be doing, which is click on a tool, and it will tell you what the tool does. In this case, I have the select tool uh, clicked on. If I click on another one, say the eraser, it usually has a little video that describes how it works. And this is great if you either remember that there's something you wanted to do, but you can't remember how to do it, um, or uh, just to refresh your memory. It also has a nice description of the different modifier keys. Uh, and this is super handy uh, because they're, like in AutoCAD, there's a lot of modifiers. It can be hard to remember. Uh, the other thing that is similar to AutoCAD in every program is you have to save stuff. And uh, first of all, if you go to your preferences, you can save your document under a new name. Now, I have already saved this as a name, so I don't need to. Um, and uh, the first time that you, when you're starting a new document, you should remember to save it. What you'll find is that if I check the settings here, in the application um, that it actually does autosave automatically every five minutes. Where does it autosave? I believe it only autosaves uh, online. So you'll, in order to recover it, it's a little tricky. Um, you can also save these documents onto your computer uh, just by choosing download SKP. 
Uh, also, if your browser and download uh, your computer support it, you can actually download an app, uh, the SketchUp app, uh, so that it's freestanding from the web uh, interface. I believe you do still need to be attached to the internet in order for your license to be uh, activated. Um, however, this is super handy. Uh, anyway, in this menu, there are other things you can do, including import uh, a new document. Um, uh, but you can also import uh, the file formats that are not SketchUp file formats. By default, SketchUp file formats ends with .skp. It will also, when saving documents onto your computer, save a backup file that's a .skb file, b for backup, just like AutoCAD. Um, but just like AutoCAD, you can export file formats that are not file format, uh, AutoCAD file formats. And in this case, uh, you can see there's DWG. I can actually export a 2D or a 3D model to AutoCAD. Um, and then there's other file formats for a variety of different uses. Finally, you can, like I said, download the SKP file. Uh, PNG is an image file format, and then STL is commonly used in 3D printing. So there's a lot of uh, features uh, and interactivity with other programs. Again, just like AutoCAD, uh, except for the whole 3D thing. Okay, so I keep saying that there are some differences with AutoCAD. Obviously, the biggest difference is this 3D nature of the uh, software. But the other thing is that this uh, software has a warehouse of components, again those are like AutoCAD blocks, that you can access online through the software. And this is a very powerful feature. It's called the 3D Warehouse. I'll click on that and it says, what can we help you find? And you might say uh, something that interests you. For example, I would love to have a Barcelona chair in my project. Uh, of course, you have to agree if you haven't already um, and uh, type in what you want and uh, hit enter or click the search bar. And what you'll find is a whole menu of uh, chairs out there that meet whatever your search criteria. Now, SketchUp, uh, just like every other program that we have, does actually enjoy making money off of us. So initially, there are products um, that are from known manufacturers. For example, here's from Knoll manufacturers. Um, and, and there may be others from other companies that sell the same furniture. Uh, I usually go to the Models tab. It's kind of the wild, wild west, um, but I don't know. It always feels nice to support people who create these models uh, for their, their own use or for just the, the pleasure of the general public. Um, the other thing is that you can kind of see how many uh, pieces, how big this file is going to be. Uh, here in this menu, for example, this one here, it says it's 645 kilobytes. This is 13,000 polygons. And the fewer polygons, the better. So you can see here, this one is a, a much lighter chair uh, because it has, uh, oh, what is this? Only 464 polygons. Uh, whereas this one has like a zillion, 47,000 polygons. That's a lot. Um, you can click on the image directly to get more information about it, or you can just download it right into your model. And you'll see here that when you download it, it comes connected to your cursor. And this is an object that's now part of your model, just like any block or component. So that integration is so much better than in AutoCAD, where you have to kind of do a lot of hunting around. Also, if I tap M for the move command, these are three-dimensional objects, so all of the uh, moving tools allow you to uh, do things like rotate it and rotate it in many uh, axes. Uh, for example, I can rotate it and put it upside down. I don't know why I would do that, but I could certainly do that. Uh, and it behaves like any other component. You can copy it, you can paste it, you can paint it. So super handy, big difference with AutoCAD. Another big difference is the paint bucket. And we love the paint bucket. It's over here in your paint bucket, uh, in your toolbar menu, tap B for a bucket, or just click paint. Now, in this case, uh, I have created a lot of groups and components, and those are a little tricky to paint. But you can see here these two objects I created. Uh, once I click the paint bucket, and uh, I'm gonna close the instructor, by the way, uh, so that because I, I don't have that big a screen, so I only have so much space. But you can see there's a lot of materials here that I could already paint. These are already in the model. 
and then I could search for additional materials just by clicking on the search button. And there's all sorts of fun materials in here, roofing, stone. And when you click on these, you can obviously click on one of them. This is of course quite different than in AutoCAD where the materials, uh, you basically don't have any materials because it's all just lines and fill patterns and, and the like. Another fun thing that's different here in SketchUp is uh, what are called styles. Uh, and that's uh, down here uh, below the uh, materials library. Uh, just click on that. Uh, let me let me close the materials library so we have a little space. And you can see there's, there's a couple of uh, materials here in my model. And like the other menu, you can browse for additional ones. Um, for example, if I just want, oh, I don't know, sketchy edges, I can choose one of these styles and it will apply it to my view. And you can see here, there's some odd things that are visible because I have uh, these section planes in my model. These will cut open the model or um, if I double click on them, it activates or deactivates them. You, you, can, you can certainly hide these uh, things. Uh, from your view, but uh, that, that those styles are a big deal. Tied to styles is another concept called scenes. And I'm going to click on this one down here, and you'll see a list of scenes. I've actually created all these scenes, and you, you can kind of tell from the preview what each of these scenes are. Um, if I just click on one of them, whoops, click on the image, it will change the view of my model so that I can see what it from one angle, or another angle, I can see the inside, um, I can see it in one point, um, I can even see it in an orthographic floor plan view. So these saved scenes are super handy for quickly navigating your model and also, of course, for exporting uh, files that you can do uh, presentations with. Finally, there is this uh, display option uh, tool palette here uh, that has some features because we're dealing with 3D models you have a lot of things that you sometimes you need to hide things um, either facets on a complex uh, three-dimensional surface or the section planes that we saw earlier section cuts which turns them on and off and of course the 3D axes so you can hide all of these sorts of things here in your model I mean even for example if you see here where it says component edit Let's say I'm editing this component, but I want to see where the rest of my model is. I can just tell it, oh, don't do that. Don't hide the rest of the model. And now I can actually edit this component uh, with information from the rest of the model. Or I can hide the rest of the model and not do that. Anyway, and then there's things like shadows. Again, because we have a three-dimensional model, uh, things like shadows become quite important. Okay, I think it's time to actually draw something now. And as I might have mentioned, we are going to draw this tiny house that we have drawn twice before in both AutoCAD and by hand. So the way you start is give yourself a brand spank a new model. And uh, in this case, uh, mine has telling me that I have some stuff in here I should purge. So you should always allow SketchUp to purge uh, itself. That saves file space. And so now in this brand spanking new model here, I have plenty of space. I have this fellow here as a kind of reference scale. It might behoove us to take a look at the dimensions of the plan, at least in the simplest way. It's 32 feet by 16 feet. And if we look at the elevations, uh, we can refresh our memory about what the heights of everything is. And with SketchUp, the basic idea here is to model the mass of the building, the kind of overall shape, and any major pieces. And then later on, we're going to add in things like floor and wall and roof thicknesses. So the easiest way to start is with a rectangle. You can type in R or you can click on the rectangle tool. And I'm going to start at the origin and I'm going to make a rectangle. And uh, what did I say? 32 feet by 16 feet. I'm going to type that in and hit enter. And there you go. There's the base of my house. Now, I, if you remember, uh, it has a kind of uh, foundation that's about a foot high. So I can use this tool right below, push-pull, to push-pull up this base 12 inches. And I can just type in 12 
to quickly make it the correct dimension. Now, I also want to make another level that's eight feet up. If you remember, that's the kind of top of the wall, but I don't want to mess up this wall. See how if I push pull, it, it, I lose my little kind of uh, water table that I just created. Um, so you have to tap the control key and I'll just tap it. Again, you don't have to hold it down, just tap it. And look what happened to the cursor. A little plus sign is next to it. So that turns the push pull tool into the push pull, but making a copy tool. So I'll just click once to start the tool. And again, I could click a second time or I could just type in eight feet and enter. Okay, and there you go. I have myself kind of the base of the building. And of course, the beauty of modeling in 3D is I now have a start, at least, on my floor plan and all four exterior elevations and all four interior elevations to a certain extent. Now, how am I going to draw the roof peak? Well, here is where you take advantage of sticky geometry in SketchUp. I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint of one wall to the midpoint of the other wall. And again, your smart cursor, just like in AutoCAD, will find those O snaps. I click once to place it. But now, instead of push pulling or other things, I can just move this line. I tapped M to move. I'm going to move in the blue direction. If you're having trouble getting it to snap onto that inference, just tap the up arrow and it will force it to go in the blue direction. And all I have to do is type in eight feet and geometrically, that will get me a 45 degree angle. And the reason is because that outside wall is 16 feet long and I needed uh, the angle of my, my triangle to be eight feet, half of 16 uh, wide and half of 16 fall, tall, so eight feet. And there you go, you've got yourself a little house. Now, how do I make that little indentation for the foundation? Again, it's that push-pull command. I'm gonna tap P to activate it and push pull in the sides one inch. Fun fact, if you double click on another surface, it will push pull it whatever dimension you push pulled last. So you see how I can quickly generate that little kind of uh, overhang for the roof. So there you have it. You have the kind of a, a real basic shell of the building in almost no time at all. Now we need to talk about grouping objects and the big thing here is you pretty much want to have things grouped uh, as you use them. So in this case, it, it is awfully handy to have the roof as something we can turn on and off on its own. And I could use tags for this feature, but also the roof, uh, I don't want it to stick to anything else as I you know, make push, push pulling and moving. So I'm going to make this main part of the building into a group. All I have to do is triple click on it, one, two, three, and it's selected. I could also, again, use the crossing window or selection window, probably a selection window in this case. Then right click on it and choose make group. So now it's completely isolated. Um, if I were to draw, and because I want to draw the roof thickness now, uh, when I draw the roof thickness, I'm, I'm going to draw a rectangle on one side and maybe a rectangle on the other side and then I can select these two roof surfaces and anything I do to them they won't stick to the bottom of the uh, building. So I'm going to make these into their own group as well. Now here's one thing that's really handy when you double click on a group you see how I can see the rest of the model but I also have this ability to hide the rest of the model. And sometimes this is super handy if you're trying to say, add some kind of feature onto the underside of the roof. Maybe there's paneling or something like that. Now, in this case, I want to create a thickness for the roof. And I'll just use my handy push-pull command. I can push-pull out the roof, but really, if I remember correctly, it should only be six inches. Just type in six and enter. And then this other side should also be six inches. And again, I could just uh, double click on it um, or I could type in the number. Now the roof overhang, whoa, in this direction here is also six inches, but watch what happens if I pull this out, see how it doesn't pull the other half? 
So I'm going to erase, and I'll tap E to erase, this extra little nubbin here. And now when I push pull this wall out, I can just type in six and enter and get it exactly right. And I'll do the same for the other side. Erase the little nubbin and push pull exactly six inches. And there you go. When you click outside the gray bounding box of your group, you can see the rest of the model. So you can pretty, get a pretty good idea that that's a very quick way to get your model to work. Okay, let's create this window here uh, on this side of the building. And if I remember correctly, it's right in the middle and it's four feet square. The trick with creating windows and doors and other things which punch holes in other objects is you need to be inside that object in order to create the hole. And in this case, remember, I created this group so it wasn't sticky. Well, now I need to double click on it to take advantage of that stickiness. And I'll draw myself a little four foot by four foot square, four feet comma four feet and enter. And uh, this square, uh, if I remember, there's a one inch piece of trim. Well, this gives us a chance to use my favorite tools, the offset tool. And if you click on the uh, three dots, if the offset tool isn't visible, you'll see it over here. Uh, the offset tool has the keyboard shortcut of F because I don't know why it has the, <laughs> I guess because it's offset or something like that. Anyway, uh, click the offset tool and you can see how your cursor is guessing which surface you want to offset. It offsets surfaces. And now you can just click and drag to uh, offset whatever edge it has detected. And you can type in a dimension, in this case one, and enter, and it should uh, offset at one inch. I must have hit another key by mistake. So if you do that and it doesn't accept the dimension, just hit undo, control Z, and try it again. Now, just to make this window a wee bit more interesting, I'm going to push pull in the glass surface so that that seems more like a um, punched opening. So I'll tap uh, push pull, uh, P for push pull, and uh, push it in about four inches. Enter. Uh, finally, I can use the good old paint bucket here. You can tap B for the paint bucket, and maybe I'll paint this a, a glass material, and now we can see inside the building. So I'm almost done with my component. The uh, only thing I need to do is turn it into a component. Now, when creating a component from objects you've drawn, you have to select them, but you have to be really careful. I can use a selection window, not a crossing window, selection window, but you see how I've accidentally selected that line at the back of the building? So make sure you orbit your model so that you just select the objects that you want without accidentally grabbing anything beyond. It won't select anything that's not inside your current uh, group or component. Now, just right-click on it and choose Make Component. And like with blocks in AutoCAD, give it a name. Uh, I'll call it uh, Window Square-ish, something like that. Um, and I don't really care about the gluing it to any surface so much. I probably should, but I don't. But I do care about this option, Cut Opening. And what this will do is any new instance of this window will cut an opening into a surface that it's placed into. So I'll click OK, and I'll select this window. And actually, I can right-click on it and choose Copy. And this is a great way, if you want to make a quick copy to an opposite side of the building, just right-click and choose Paste. You can also use Control-C and Control-V. But now you can see I can paste this into this window. Uh, this wall, and it cuts the opening very naturally. So that's the beauty of that option. Also, if I wanted to make any changes, for example, if I wanted to, uh, I don't know, paint the window frame or something like that, I could absolutely do it uh, here inside the component. Now, the two windows are in different positions. This window here is four feet up from the center of the bottom uh, of this wall. So I do have to move it into position. I'm gonna grab it by its midpoint and move it down to the midpoint of this outside wall. There we go. 
and then I'll move it back up four feet. Uh, and it's because it's so easy to move objects and because their groups are components, they're not sticky, it's really um, good. I don't accidentally mess up the whole model. This one is a little different. I believe the endpoint here is at the middle of this outside wall. And I believe it's only 12 inches up off the bottom of the wall. But I do need to make this one taller. To make it taller, you know, in, in AutoCAD, I would, I would just use stretch. Uh, but in this case, one, I don't want to make both windows taller, just this one taller. So I can right click on this uh, component and choose Make Unique. Now, if I edit it, just by double clicking on it, I can use my uh, selection window, select the top of the window, and when I move it, because of that sticky geometry, the frame of the window, the glass, that will all stick to my cursor. Just make sure you're going absolutely vertical because you can get some weird effects if you go outside of the axes system. And I'll type in three feet and enter. And there you go, I have myself a lovely window. These uh, circular windows on the back wall work the same way, right? You're going to want to make a circle, and uh, the circle tool, if it's not visible, which it's not, um, you can find it here under the other uh, menu, or you can also type in C for circle. Uh, I'll start the same way, make myself a lovely four foot diameter um, circle. Uh, four foot diameter is two feet radius, so I'll type in 24 inches and enter. I'll use my offset tool, like we did before, to offset this one inch. I can even do what we did before and push-pull this surface in about four inches. Um, so now I have myself a circle, and um, I can e turn this into a component. Again, I'm hoping not to select anything beyond it. Pretty sure that I'm good, but if you're not sure, just go around and, and make sure you haven't selected anything you didn't want to and make it into a component like we did before. And we'll call this one window round. Okay, like before, make sure you choose cut opening and okay. Just like we did with the previous window, uh, we're gonna wanna move it into position. Now that, but to do that, we need to find the one third points of this outer wall. Now, if you remember in AutoCAD, we just selected the line that was the edge of that outer wall, right-clicked on it, and there was an option for dividing. Well, guess what? We have the same option here. Select that outer line, uh, right-click on it, and choose divide. Now, the big difference with AutoCAD is I can move my mouse and determine how many segments there are going to be as opposed to typing in a number. Now, I could type in a number also, but three segments, it even gives me the dimension. Uh, here, let me get that out of the way. Uh, and now I can just move the window into position um, by grabbing it by its endpoint and finding the endpoint here on the wall and move it up, uh, I believe it's two feet. And I'll make another copy over here. In SketchUp, there is no copy command. There's just the move command with the modifier of tapping the control key. And this is just like with the push-pull tool. Tap control, you should see uh, a little, oops, a little uh, cursor. Uh, on, uh, on your cursor, you should see a little plus sign. See how my cursor now has a little plus sign. And then you just move it over until you find that second endpoint and you've made yourself a copy. And don't forget, uh, we probably should paint these guys uh, with some glass. I'll tap B for the bucket and painted glass and close out of the this component and then close out of the overall component. For the door that's in the center of this wall, let's go with a, kind of a shortcut and we'll actually get one that's ready-made. We can do this by going to the 3D warehouse, just click on it, and I've already searched for door and I've looked under models. And again, there, there's all sorts of other ways that you can search um, and find a door that you like. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use one of these because it allows me to illustrate another feature. Uh, and I'm just gonna download these into the model here. You can't grab them individually. Uh, and one of the issues that happens with uh, imported objects, you can see this comes in as one big group of components, right? So we now need to explode this group to get at the in interior pieces. 
and I can just right click on it and uh, choose explode. And you can see they're, they're still kind of grouped together and frequently people make these objects. You don't, you don't really know how, they, how they've made them. Uh, anyway, and then I can uh, try to, I, I like this one with the glass here. I'm just going to try to move it into position. Now, some components like the ones we created have the options to snap to a particular surface and cut that surface open. Now, in our case, first of all, we've created this wall uh, as a group, so we need to edit the group first. So how do we get this guy inside the group? Well, we can just use the old copy and paste that we used before, right click on it and copy, and then come in here and choose paste. Now, if the component was designed to actually break the wall open, we would see it snap to that wall surface like our window component is, but you can see it, it's not doing that. So I'm going to place it here on the ground. And when you have the move command operate, uh, operating, um, you can move your mouse over these little plus signs, and that will allow you to rotate it some direction. And in this case, I'm going to just rotate it 90 degrees so that I get my uh, correct orientation. And then I can move this guy up against the wall, and you can see it does have a frame already. So I'm just going to move it until I get to this outside wall. However, because it didn't break the wall, I have to make my own break in the wall. I have to give myself a break. And to do that, you basically just draw a rectangle on the wall. Now, I can start the rectangle. I can, I can see this corner here where it intersects but I do have to orbit the model kind of mid-rectangle mid and draw the other side uh, down here. Now I should be able to select the offending surface and, and you can really see there's kind of a almost a broken glass look to the surface. That tells you two surfaces are on top of each other, the door frame and, and my kind of outer wall. It's called Z fighting, by the way. Anyway, I can select the surface and just tap delete and now I've got myself a beautiful door. Of course, I've made this a little difficult for myself by not putting it right in the middle of the wall beforehand. So how am I going to move it into position? Let's see. Maybe I'll draw a line from the center of this wall and use that line as a reference point. You can see here I can find the, oops, find the uh, wall uh, center line here pretty easily just by mousing around, and now I need to move the door until it's aligned with that point. So let me select the door, tap move, grab it by the midpoint of the door, not that midpoint, but that midpoint. And as long as I'm going only in the red direction, I should be able to snap right to that point. Kind of a, a backward way of doing it, I probably should have done it the other way, uh, where I put it in the correct position first and then drew the rectangle, but there you go, you don't always do it the right way. Anyway, I'll close out of the component and I'll delete all of this other refuse that's in here that I don't need. One last detail to add is the chimney. Uh, and I think I'll draw it out here uh, away from the other uh, parts of the model. Just draw myself a rectangle. I think it's 18 inches by 18 inches. That looks about right. And in fact, I think it's 18 feet tall. 18 feet. So, uh, and I'm going to make it into a group, as I have done with other objects, make it into a group. And uh, finally, I need to move it into position. So I'm going to grab it by its corner uh, of the out outside corner here, and move it to the outside corner of the building. Um, now I can move it into position. The only trick is, what is that position? Well, looking at my floor plan, it does look like it's nine feet in, but it's nine feet in from the inside of this wall. I've actually placed the uh, component right here, or the group right here on the outside of the wall. So I do have to add in an extra six, six inches to get it into the correct position. Again, when you model in SketchUp, you are often starting with the shell of the building. And so those wall thicknesses, if, if you know them, uh, become important because you, you don't see them, at least not yet. 
So I'll move this guy over, and I'm not going to click on the building or on the object because that might get a little confusing dimensionally. I don't want my smart cursor going, going bananas on me. So I'm just going to click on the ground, and I'll move it over uh, 4.5 feet. And then I'll move it along the red axis 9.5 feet. And why am I doing 9.5 <laughs> instead of... I don't know, uh, you know, nine and a half or nine fifth dash six inches. Uh, I don't know. It's just easier to type a decimal place in my mind, but you, you can absolutely type in nine, a little foot symbol, and then six inches and enter, and it will have the same effect. Finally, when you place it into position, you'll notice it, it kind of looks uh, like it, there's, no, there's no line edge there. And this is because these are two separate groups, the roof group and the chimney group. Um, what you can do, select the chimney group, right click on it, and choose intersect faces with model. And what this will do is it will actually create that edge joint, which will allow you to paint everything in a nice and neat manner. Let's finish out our model by drawing the site. And you can see, uh, if you remember from when we drew it on AutoCAD, that our site is 72 feet square and uh, it's kind of offset 20 feet in this direction, 28 feet in this direction. It's, it's kind of in the center. And, uh, and then there's a, a driveway and a walkway and a, and a kind of landing for airs. So let's zoom out here in our model and give us a little space. And like we did with the base of the house and with the roof and the chimney, let's draw ourselves the site as a group. I'm going to make it 72 feet by 72 feet, like we found in our little drawing. Uh, and I'm going to start by making it a group. I'm going to move the group into position here. Um, and actually, I guess I should put it at the origin uh, because of my little roof overhang. But then I'll just move it in the correct uh, offset here. And I could use the midpoints and, and center it that way. Or I could, I happen to know the dimensions. It's 28 feet in the green direction and 20 feet in the red direction. Either way works. And let's see, the driveway, if I remember correctly, was, um, what was it, 20 feet by uh, 11 feet, enter. Um, and I can select that guy and move it here. Uh, again, using the references, I can have it go in the red direction, but make reference to this corner of the house. I'm pretty sure it aligns with that. And then go in the green direction so that it is aligned with the bottom of the um, site. And I can also draw another rectangle that is five feet by five feet. Again, I'll just move it into position here. The tricky bit is always getting it to align. In this case, uh, finding that midpoint of the building. I can align it with that. And then I can align it with the outer edge of the building. And I'll push pull it up uh, six inches so that it has some six, uh, thickness. And uh, finally, uh, drawing in the arcs for the bottom of the or the curving section of the sidewalk that's always tricky uh, just like we mentioned in AutoCAD finding the right arc tool that gets you uh, the uh, dimension that you want uh, now in this case if I remember there's actually a line that's uh, that it begins a foot off of this edge here so I'm going to use move copy make a copy 12 inches away from that corner. I'll make another copy that's 12 inches away from this corner, just so I have some kind of reference uh, to go by here, type in 12. And now I can uh, use my arc tool uh, like I was hoping. Let's see if we can get the right one the first time. Oops, except don't start that way. Um, make sure that you don't have anything selected. 
And uh, let's see here. I'll start the arc over here and over here. Now, with SketchUp, one of the things that's so tricky is we could be in three dimensions. I'm just going to tap my up arrow, and you'll see that the, the arc can go up. So really make sure that you know which, which direction your arc is going in. Uh, I'm going to uh, hit escape and try that again, just to make sure I get it on the ground. And uh, there you have it. You can see that the line here is uh, connected to these points and it is dividing up this uh, surface or at least, it's, at least it's connected to this surface. And by the way, these arcs, you can see they're, they're actually made up of facets. Um, there's really no real true curves in SketchUp. But if you want it curvier, get the entity info about that arc, and you can actually change the number of segments. Um, and if I make this, say, half the number, six, you can really see that this is a very segmented kind of arch. Sometimes that's actually handy. Um, but if you want it smoother, uh, just start doubling the number. You see how that's a much smoother looking arc. Uh, and now I can use the offset tool. Click once on the edge here, and I can, I can make a copy three feet away. Uh, the only trick is you see how it doesn't quite align. It doesn't quite line up here. Uh, you know, probably because of the, the way that I drew it. So make sure that you, when you draw this uh, line, that you connect to that edge. And now you see how the lines are much lighter line weight? And that means this surface is, is its own unique piece, and I can paint that as I see fit. Now I'll just uh, use my erase tool to trim out or uh, clean up this drawing a little bit. But there you have it. You have a site that is pretty convincing. Um, and uh, you have a building that is more or less like our tiny house. So good for you. You made it to the end. You've got your lovely building, but um, you need to prove it to me. And uh, what you need to do, two things. First of all, you'll want to save the document. So click Save. And if you get this message about purging uh, unused items, absolutely do that. And what that does is remove any stuff that you might have uh, not needed, like those extra doors saves you a little bit on file size. Um, and you can make your own projects folder, um, or you can save it right here. I have my the default folder, which is the SketchUp folder, and I'll call it uh, Tiny House 2023. There you go. Save here. Um, and you'll be uh, able to access that model on really any computer. Um, you can share it and uh, other things. And uh, what I'd like you to do for me is instead uh, choose download PNG. That's an image file. Uh, and you can uh, choose what you're going to export, but do me a favor and show me the entire model. You'll notice here that there are some standard views um, that are available um, in your model. But uh, by default, uh, it takes this uh, dimension of your screen and whatever you happen to be looking at. And that is fine for so choose export as PNG, save it onto your computer, and post it for homework.